Hello everyone! In this tutorial, I'll explain what an empty rectangle is and how you can use it strategically when solving a Sudoku puzzle. The king of Sudoku logic is to make assumptions, follow those assumptions, and then see if they lead to a contradiction or an impossible situation, and if it does, you know your assumption is wrong. Now for the empty rectangle, and I'll explain why it's called that later on in the video, but let me first explain that an empty rectangle is always restricted to a block. The pattern in the block containing an empty rectangle for a particular number will have that number in exactly one row and one column in the block. The rest of the block will not have that number and therefore will be empty. Take a look at this 3x3 three three block. There are 4's in the top row and last row, making a sort of L shape. But you can see there are no other 4's in the block. All the possible 4's are restricted to one row and one column, as you see here. All the cells in the row or column don't have to be filled with 4's, as in this example, where every cell in one row and every cell in one column has a 4. That's not necessary. The pattern could look like this as well, where only some of the cells have 4's, but still, all the 4's are restricted to one row and one column, and the rest of the block is empty of 4's. No 4's outside of the one row and one column, as you see in this example. Now, in this configuration, the one row and one column that contains the number 4 form a right angle to each other using the top row and last columns. The empty rectangle consists of the cells that cannot contain the number 4, and those are these four cells forming a rectangle. Well, really a square, but a square is a special type of rectangle, so these four cells form the empty rectangle in this block. Let's look at another possible configuration of the one row, one column restriction. Here you can see instead of the top row, I'm using the middle row and the last column. All the fours are in this row and this column, so again we have a sort of L shape, and in this case the empty rectangle cells are these four cells. They cannot contain the number four or this pattern won't work. And again, not all the cells have to have numbers in them, but the four has to be in either this row or this column and nowhere else in the block. And here is another configuration, same idea. The number four is restricted to exactly one row and one column in the block. This time it's the last row and last column in the block. So far the configurations I've shown you of one row and one column form L shapes or right angles to each other. They can be upside down or backwards as well, but the L shape or right angle shape is pretty easy to recognize. Here's another configuration. This is T-shaped, but again the fours are restricted to one row, and in this example the last row, and one column, and here it is the middle column, making it an upside down T-shape. It can also be a sideways T-shape like this. Again, you can see the fours are restricted to just one row, the middle row, and one column, and don't appear anywhere else in the block. The T-shape, just like the L-shape, does not have a four in every cell, and here you can see the T-shape with some of the cells containing fours and some not, but all the fours are restricted to one row and one column. That's the rule. So we have L shapes and T shapes, and then there's one more shape, and that's a plus sign or a cross shape. Here you can see the middle row and the middle column of block 4 has 4's in it. The 4 outer cells cannot contain 4's. Remember the pattern is that the number has to be restricted to exactly one row and one column. The outer cells that don't contain the 4 make up the empty rectangle, as it's called, but the main part of this pattern is the one row and one column that contains the number. Of course, one row and one column can be L-shaped or T-shaped 
or a cross plus sign shaped, and the L's and T's can be upside down or sideways, filling up the whole row or short, it doesn't matter, as long as the number you are looking at conforms to the rules. Got it? Now what? Well, now we need a conjugate pair of fours with one of the pair in either the same row or the same column as the fours in the empty rectangle block. So using this cross pattern example, we need to find a conjugate pair of fours with one of the pair in either this row or this column. Here is a conjugate pair of fours in the same row as the empty rectangle block. These fours in column six are the only fours in the column, so they are a conjugate pair. One of them has to be true and the other has to be false. They can't both be true and they can't both be false since they are the only fours in that column. This four is in the same row as the row in the empty rectangle block, so this is a great example. The conjugate pair can also be in a row with one of the pair in the same column as the column in the empty rectangle block, as you see here. Here's an example with a conjugate pair of fours in the second row, and this four is in the same column as the empty rectangles column. So now we have the pattern that we need for the empty rectangle strategy. We have the empty rectangle block, that's this block, block four, with a cross pattern. And we have a conjugate pair with one of the pair in either the row or column from the empty rectangle block. By the way, the conjugate pair can't be in the same block, and you can see here that they are in two different blocks. Let's label the conjugate pair of fours as X and Y. X is the four that lies in the same row or column as the empty rectangle, and Y is the other four. In this example, X is in the same column, not row, as the empty rectangle, so let's label this X, and the other four from the conjugate pair is Y. Now we can eliminate any four candidate that is in the empty rectangle row that can also see the Y candidate. Since X is in the column, the elimination candidate will be in the row and vice versa. Remember the pattern is exactly one row and one column. So if the X candidate is in the column, as you see here, then the elimination candidate is in the same row, but it must also see the Y candidate. This four is in the same row as the row from the empty rectangle, and it also sees the Y candidate from the conjugate pair of fours, so this four can be eliminated. I'll explain the logic behind this when we get to a real example, but let me review this pattern one more time using the same cross shape, but this time the conjugate pair is in column six, and so now we have our rows and columns switched. Take a look at this example. This example is exactly the opposite situation. We have a conjugate pair of fours now in a column, and one of the fours lines up with a row from the empty rectangle. Let's label that four as X, and this four as Y, and now we can eliminate any four that is in the same column as the empty rectangle and also sees the Y candidate. This four is in the same column as the empty rectangle and sees the Y candidate from the conjugate pair. Remember, the X candidate is in the same row as the empty rectangle, so we look to the column to find the cell that sees the Y candidate, and now we can eliminate that four. Okay, hopefully you've been following along so far and you're ready for a real example. Take a look at this Sudoku puzzle in progress. There is an empty rectangle here that will help us to get further in the puzzle. The trick, of course, is finding it. Sometimes it's easier to look for a conjugate pair first, and if you find one, then look for the empty rectangle. Obviously, the empty rectangle is useless without the conjugate pair, right? So in the last row, there's a conjugate pair of threes, and they are in different blocks. Great. Now we can look for an empty rectangle in the columns of these threes, and looking up from this first three, we can see there's an empty rectangle pattern in block one.
This is an L-shaped pattern, and you can see that the threes are restricted to the top row and the last column in block one. There are no other threes in block one, so we have found our empty rectangle pattern. That makes this three the X candidate, since it's in the same column as the empty rectangle, and this three is the Y. So now, if there's a three in the same row as the empty rectangle, and in the same column as the Y, meaning it sees it, then we can eliminate that three. And yes, there is a three here in this cell. This three sees the Y candidate, and is also in the same row as the empty rectangle, so it can be eliminated. Now, let's talk about the logic of why this works. In this last row, the threes make up a conjugate pair, meaning one of them is true. If this three we called Y is true, then this three that sees it in the same column can't be true. But if this three we called X is true, then this three in the same column can't be true, and therefore the three in block one has to be in the top row. So one of these threes in the top row is true, and therefore this three in the same row can't be true. So either way around, if Y is true, then this can't be true. And if X is true, then this three can't be true. So either way, it can be eliminated. Let's take a look at another example of a Sudoku puzzle in progress. Take a look at this puzzle and see if you can find a conjugate pair. Starting with the number one, I don't see a conjugate pair of ones in either the rows or the columns. What about twos? Yes, there's a conjugate pair of twos in this row. And when I look up to block two, I see an L-shaped empty rectangle. And great, that would make this the X candidate and this the Y candidate. And so if there was a two in this cell, it could be eliminated. But there isn't a two in this cell, so this is not helpful. Let's keep looking for a conjugate pair that results in something. And here, here's a conjugate pair of twos in column six. And they're not in the same block, so this may work. In block three, there's an empty rectangle pattern. You can see all the twos in block three are restricted to just one row and one column. All the twos are either in the bottom row of the block or in the last column, and there are no other twos in the block. So since this two is in the same row as the empty rectangle, let's label this as X and this two as Y. Now this cell contains a two and it's in the same row as the Y candidate, meaning it sees it, and it's in the same column as the empty rectangle. So this two can be eliminated. Just for fun, let's go through the logic here. Since this is a conjugate pair of twos, one has to be true and the other false. If this one, we labeled it Y, is true, meaning it's a two, then this cell can't be a two. But if this cell, we called it X, is true, meaning that it is a two, then the twos in this row can't be true, and since block three needs a two, that two must be in the last column. And then this cell can't be a two. So either way around, whichever of these two cells is the two, this cell can't be a two, and so we can eliminate it. It does appear quite often, so look for it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and as always, I hope you learned something.